So now it's, it's our runway that's getting a little crowded over here. <laughs> um, well, first of all, you know, this film is about many things, but one thing it's about hospitality and treating, uh, you know, welcoming strangers. So as we native Manhattanites like to say, welcome to our island. Um, let's start with you, Peter. Um, you know, obviously, in the coming days, many of us, particularly those who uh, live through the experiences here in New York, will our memory will sort of go back to where we were on that on that tragic morning. Um, and while we all know where the three of you were, uh, where were you on the morning of 9/11? Uh, actually, I was on a, uh, a film set. I was working on a show, and my um, wife called me as a, as I was going in, and uh, she told me about a plane hitting the building, and, um, you know, I, I kind of thought it was some small little plane, like everyone, and then, you know, we got the set, and there was a, someone uh, talked about it, we got a TV, and basically no one did anything the rest of the day, we just glued to it, and uh, uh, it just sort of, uh, you know, it's left a, uh, a mark on all of us, and uh, it's incredible that sort of uh, 18 years later we're able to uh, talk about it in a different kind of way. The story of, of, of uh, Gander, I think, kind of got overwhelmed by everything that was going on, as it should have uh, at that time, but I think over time we've been able to kind of find out about it and, um, and, and share it, so I'm very happy about that. Sure, how, how about you, Mose, where were you on the morning of 9-11? Uh, um, I was in my apartment building, and um, and I um, hadn't seen anything um, I, as of 8.45. I hadn't heard anything. And um, I was going out of the building, and the concierge um, was coming into the building from the driveway. And he had this look of absolute horror. And I knew something was really wrong. And I said, uh, I said, Woody, wh what's wrong? And he just went, uh, uh. He couldn't just speak, you know, and um, and and I and he said, J "Go, go watch TV," you know, and so I said, "Oh my God, something's terrible's happened," you know. So I went back up to my apartment, and there it was, you know. Yeah, Peter, you know, you're uh, Canadian from Toronto. Uh, had you wanted or set out to make a, a documentary about 9-11 or if it was specifically the story of Gander that attracted you to this story? Uh, Mose actually called me. I was uh, getting on a plane on this other project that was driving me nuts and uh, I was really sort of wanted to quit doing what I did and I said uh, Mose was being very forceful to get me to uh, to work with him on this and I said unless it has to do with blooming flowers I'm not going to do it and he said I have something that's just like blooming flowers. <laughs> Uh, and it became this film, and uh, like I said, I've you know traveled because work all over the place. Uh, Newfoundland is like sort of place I never had traveled to. I have a neighbor across the street that would just tell me constantly how great Newfoundland was, and so I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so it came about, and then when we went there, I think sort of uh, I, I think most felt the same way. You know, we'd heard so much about people from Newfoundland, and when you go there, it's even more than whatever you sort of you could imagine, and. Uh, you know, we've made great friends with people there, and uh, they're incredible, uh, incredible uh, people. And like Manhattan, they're on an island, you <laughs> know? So it's kind of funny that they connected on that day. Absolutely. Uh, now, having lived through these events, what is it like reliving it, uh, watching the film? <laughs> I, th I think so. I, I feel the same emotion of a loss of so many lives and it is sobering, even to watch it today. For me, it's a little different. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, because we, as, as uh, a Ganderite, as a Newfoundland and Labradorian, we still don't think we did a lot. We thought we only did what was right, what needed to be done, and we just did it. And we were not expecting anything <coughs> from it. And that was the... This is a shock for us the way that it's 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 ended up. Yeah. Um, Want to add anything, Nick? Sure. Every time I see this, I've seen it probably four times now. Um, there are certain parts of the the movie that that have me uh, m my eyes start leaking, uh, yeah. and that's not normal for me. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it is for Diane. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, you know, well I guess what people may not appreciate is that you know once the uh, once the airlines once the uh, airplanes left, 
the story of Gander didn't end, and I assume it attracted you know, media attention and then obviously film crews. I mean, was there ever the point where you were saying, don't turn off the stoves, more people are coming? I mean, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, we, you know, uh, right after 9-11, we did get some media attention, but then it seemed to die off. Then Jim DeFeeve wrote the book, The Day the World Came to Town, and we were noticed a little bit then. Uh, but, uh, and then Tom Brokoff with, its, with his uh, special on after the Olympics, the Operation Yellow Ribbon, uh, there was a lot more, but it's the uh, play come from away, and now you are here. And the you are here is really, you know, part and partial of come from away. It's the two of them are almost like they're married, like those two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I want to bring some of the folks from the play, and um, I guess a two-part question, anyone feel free to answer. One was, were you aware of the story of Gander before you became attached to the play? And, and also, what is it like, particularly you know, seeing their stories, uh, was the sense of responsibility of playing these real-life people, and you know, what is that like uh, on a nightly basis? I'll start, okay. Um, I knew nothing about the events that uh, occurred in Newfoundland um, on that day or the following days. So uh, when I first read the script uh, for the audition, I was blown away, I think, as, as anyone who hears about the event would be. Um, and I also wondered, how is this going to be on stage? How is it going to be coming from this page to something that will be up on its feet? Um, and, and to get to do that now over 1,200 times with so many of the same cast members, and we get have been to Gander and met everyone. It just becomes this incredible family. Uh, it's, it's, I feel like I've just been so blessed to be uh, brought into this family and getting to tell this story of the generosity of these people and the, the relationships, the family, the, the love, the joy, the hope. Getting to do that uh, eight times a week in the world that we live in is a very good thing. It's very honorable and, and I feel very blessed. Well, I thought it certainly couldn't be true <laughs> as I was reading it. I was like, well, uh, this is a sweet story. And then, you know, you come to find out it actually is all true. But I do remember reading it and as I was going through the pages and their storyline was developing, I kept thinking, oh, I hope they get together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just then I kept, I was like turning the page. I wasn't even, I was supposed to go in to play Beulah originally. So, you know, I was tracking these two right from the get-go because I know, I, I tell a terrible joke, so I knew I would never be Beulah. <laughs> and so then when I, after I did the audition, they called back and they said, we'd like for you to come in for Diane. I was like, well, now I got a fighting shot. <laughs> so that felt great. And, and um, mostly, I mean, there's a responsibility and there's all of that, but mostly, um, certainly for for us, it's just fun. We have a, a terrifically fun storyline to get to tell every night. And um, honestly, I'm just glad that this all happened because I haven't seen them in a really long time. And I was really, you know, they've been off meeting other Nick and Diane's around the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to have them Oops. back here. <laughs> I just joined the cast, uh, so I'm the newest cast member. I just joined in, in November of uh, 2018. Uh, and so uh, I, d I had no idea what had happened in Gander. And so uh, I saw the show and was uh, moved and auditioned and here I am. And I just met Nick and Diane last night. So <laughs> I'm, uh, and, and they'll see the show tomorrow night. So I have some work to do tonight, wow. I suppose. But <laughs> and he gets to fall in love eight yes. times a week. No, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been an absolute thrill and honor to be wow. a part of yeah, it. Nothing intimidating there, just you know. No. No. <laughs> well, it's, it must be a little bit odd to know there are, there are Nick and Diane's around the world, and um, you know, obviously, your story is very unique in this, uh, as you point out in, in the documentary. Um, I, I think you said you know while other people were, you know, uh, finding heartbreak, you had found happiness and joy. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and how it affects on a yearly basis, particularly as we prepare for the anniversary? You know, most people's tone becomes somber and, and reflective, and it was ended up being a, a, the events weren't happy, but the outcomes for you, uh, you know, led to happiness. For the, for the longest time, uh, and, and we still do to some extent, really, we suffered with uh, survivor's guilt. We felt guilty for 
the happiness that we found. So much happiness and with for each the other. For the longest time, we wouldn't share that story uh, only with friends and, and family. Uh, and it wasn't until Tom Brokaw, uh, they found us through the mayor of our town who wrote a song for us. W when we went back for our honeymoon, 2000, uh, September 11th, 2002, the day after we got married, and we were there for the first anniversary. Th there was a commemorative um, service at the airport, and the Canadian uh, prime minister was there, the ambassadors, and the media was all over everything. They wanted to talk to us, and we refused to talk to anyone. We wanted the, the center of the attention to be on the Newfoundland people because they were the real heroes in this, and not all heroes wear capes. They're everyday, wonderful people who just put everything on hold for a week. And they took food out of their pantries. They took clothes from their home. They just did anything we needed done. And we've been back seven or eight times now. We're always in contact with our big northern family up there. <laughs> Oz, yes. you know, being... Uh, the, the lone person on stage who saw this from the gander perspective, uh, there were probably many more stories. You can only fit so many stories into a film. Uh, was there one particular experience during those five days that stands out to you, whether it's in the film or something that was never captured on film? Well, the one that, that really, and it was uh, talked about a little bit about in the film, was the Wish Kids. Uh, and they were from London. They were in on Virgin Airlines. There were 60 of them at St. Paul's. And I had no idea that they were, we knew they were there. I mean, I knew there was kids there and they were out playing soccer and they were, they were doing stuff and they were going for rides on ponies. They were doing all the things. And it wasn't until Kelly Sevier called me and said that they were there. And then when she told me that there was a, uh, uh, six young girls and uh, they were on, wanted to go to Disney World, they were terminal. They wanted to go so bad, and it looked like they weren't going. And it was the the it was how the party was set up. I mean, we did do it for 315. We were turned down in the beginning because they didn't want to have party for six, and there was uh, 54 others. So I just said, well, heck with it. We'll have party for 350. I don't care. So we did uh, get. Uh, you know, we, we did get all the, as a matter of fact, Commander Gander sitting just up there, my daughter Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy said he'd get you back. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, uh, she did dress up as Commander Gander. We did get uh, uh, Mary Brown's chicken. We got Wade the Milkman. We got whatever could, because the idea behind it was Disney World. Right? And it's mascots. So we figured that. But the thing that really got me was there was three young girls from my daughter's class went home and put on these gowns. And they went to the school. Because the young girls wanted the fairy tale style princess Tinkerbell uh, birthday party. So they went to the school dressed as princesses and told the young girls that Tinkerbell had phoned them <laughs> and sent them to the school. Well. And and that was and yes and the way that the father spoke to me he did you know he told me that that, that was the message he wanted me to pass on to everybody at the school that it was okay wow. and that sound rings in my ear all the time I I remember that some nights I sleep and I and I can still see him standing in the doorway waving me over wow well for five days I guess Disney World was the second happiest place on earth yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, Peter, you said something interesting in the back, and I wonder if you just, you know, unpack it a little bit. You know, you said when this film is, it's, it's very hard because you're dealing with such a tragic uh, series of events, uh, but I would call this film almost a very joyful film. And there's an irony, there's a paradox there. And you, you said something about, uh, you know, it needed a certain amount of time before a film like this could be made. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I think, you know, like anytime there's a tragedy and they happen in all our lives all the time, it might be sort of a death or divorce, a bankruptcy, whatever it might be, it takes a while uh, to get over the pain and hurt of it. And uh, 
and after a bit of time, you remember the good things in it and try and see some positive out of it. And I think, you know, if our, our the musical or even our film would have come out 10 years ago, I think it's too soon. I think it sort of doesn't give people a chance to sort of, um, you know, understand or see it from different ways. And uh, I, I think it's, you know, we've been kind of humbled by the kind of uh, response that we get uh, when the film plays because it's kind of a cathartic experience. It's, it's, you know, it's a, a kind of innocence that was taken away that day from all of us and it's never really been kind of dealt with. But that kind of thing is gone now. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is that no matter what tragedy happens and we're all going to face them, uh, there's a way of being able to find something positive in it. And to do that gives us the hope and faith to kind of keep going on when we think we can't. And I think that sort of it's a, uh, the, the musical has shown that other people have written books and uh, done shows about it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just another, another entity trying to tell the story and share it because it's becoming a myth, a legend, a parable, whatever you want to call it. But you can't tell the story enough times because I think it's something that's contagious. And, uh, you know, we don't have to do anything superhuman, just sort of be a little bit nicer to each other. And I think that's, you know, goes a long way. Um, I'll ask this question to either you or Mose, but anybody who wants to respond, please feel free. Uh, the film's website says that, you know, one of the missions of this film is to hopefully spread kindness. Um, and what would you hope that audiences, viewers, excuse the pun, come away with from uh, viewing this film? That they can make a difference. Everyone can make a difference. I don't care if you just smile at someone you're courteous to someone. Open you the door, say good morning. Yeah, good morning. Just everyday old-fashioned courtesy yeah, and nice. acceptance of other people, no matter who they are, what they look like, what they're wearing. We're all humans in this. Thank you. Isn't it amazing that a four-letter word can be so positive, the word of love? And that's all it is. We love our fellow man, and that's the way we were raised. And, and I think we were all raised that way, but we've just forgotten it. And what this film does and what the show uh, Come From Way is doing is reminding people. I think they're looking at this show, they're looking at this film and going, oh, my God, I remember when I was growing up, that's the way it was. That's the way we should be today. And, and I think that that's the message that this film and Come From Away is giving people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of giving, we want to give the audience a chance to ask some questions. But before we do, the most important question, talking about seeing this movie, how can people see this film and what oh. can they do to help other people Why see it? Why do you bring film? that up? Um, <laughs> Wednesday night at 7 p.m. all across America, uh, every state, uh, there is a movie theater that will be playing You Are Here, a Come From Away story. Uh, if you go to youarehere.doc, D-O-C, dot com, uh, you can uh, find a theater and tickets nearby. Or if you go to fathomevents.com, you can get uh, tickets, uh, uh, find a place nearby. But I want to sort of ask, plead, I'll even beg. Tell your friends, tell everyone, uh, they won't be disappointed, and, uh, and we really need your support. Okay, so if we could just raise the house lights a bit. There's a microphone over on that side. If anyone has a question uh, for anyone on stage, just ask if you could make your way over there. And actually, while people are lining up, I understand that um, we did run out of uh, runway space, but I do understand there are some ganderites and uh, some come from a ways in the audience. So if you could just raise your hand or stand up so we could give you all a hand, a round of applause. Okay, if you could just 
uh, speak into the mic and who you want to direct the question to. And um, it's not so much a question as a comment. This was magnificent. I, I'm a New Yorker who lives in Los Angeles, and I was in Toronto on 9-11 making a movie, as was Peter. There were five American actors and three American crew members, and the rest of the, the cast and the crew was Canadian. I cannot begin to tell you how loving, how kind, how supportive, what incredible care they took of us, the Americans, as this happened. We were shooting at a little train station an hour outside of Toronto as the news started to come in, and we were devastated. Come From Away, I saw twice in Los Angeles in the space of a week because I loved it so much, and this is the most magnificent addition to it I could possibly add. Thank you so much for this film and for Canada's love. Thank you. I would concur, except later in the week, my Yankees are playing the Blue Jays. So uh, maybe at the end of the week. Uh, um, any other questions do we have? Anyone else? Anyone up there? Someone up there? Yes, if you could. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Blooming flowers, blooming flowers. I'm afraid I don't look much like a blooming flower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Hi, um, my name is Dominic, and the question I have for you is sort of looking beyond the American and Canadian context. It seems to me you have an opportunity to really build some bridges across the world, to the Arab world, to the Islamic world. What has been your uh, exposure with Come From Away, with You Are Here, to uh, the world outside of uh, this part of the world? Well, we've been, we, there, right now there's five casts that Come From Away going. Uh, there's, the, of course, the one in New York. There's one in Toronto. There's a North American tour. They're touring most states in the United States as well as uh, provinces in Canada. I'm going to throw the hand out there, hoping someone from Come From Way is listening. Newfoundland would like to have it back. <laughs> but, uh, 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 but there's also a cast in London, and there is a cast in Australia. So we're, we're working our way around. <laughs> I always say that Newfoundland joined, Can uh, Canada joined Newfoundland in 49. <laughs> we didn't join them, and we've been supplying Newfoundlanders to the, prov uh, to the country for the last uh, number of years, and pretty soon we're going to own Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we're coming for you guys. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> we're coming for you. And how about you are here? Well, you know, uh, I was just going to say, uh, the, the countries that they are leaving untouched, we're going to go after with Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. And so uh, stay tuned. Uh, the film keeps growing, and the, the, uh, it's like a growing army. And so people want to uh, tell their friends about it, and we want to get it around the world because I think it's a good, good thing to put it out. There. You know, you, you dream your whole life of coming up with a, you know, working on a story that was going to have this kind of effect on people. We've been lucky for whatever reasons to, to be brought into this world, and uh, if you can share it, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's why we all get into it. Yeah, I, I honestly did had no expectation that this film would turn out the way it did, you know. But I, I just want to uh, add that uh, my own life changed because of this, uh, of, of you people and, and the experience of making the film. And um, in a small way, in just the way I treat my sisters, my mother, my father, my associates, you know. So um, what, I, what I learned from you um, was to be more patient, to be more tolerant, to be more loving, to be more giving, and empathetic. And, it, and to reach that in my heart has sort of come from today. That's, that's what happened to me. Awesome. Any other? Yes. Uh, I noticed that in, in the, um, the documentary there was talk about the Canadian government paid seed money for the musical. Was there government help in doing the documentary? I saw something about Rogers, so I thought maybe it was Abelman. Uh, <laughs> 
the funding mechanism to make a Canadian film is a uh, labyrinth of uh, of regulation and all kinds of certain things. I mean, th uh, we're very lucky that they support us, but it's a very difficult process to get through. And so there's all sorts of different mechanisms to help broadcasters, tax credits, uh, the different funding agencies and things like that that, uh, that help out. I mean, the thing is, even with Come From Away, I mean, uh, you know, at a, a, a college in Canada, there was a fund to help, you know, incubate this kind of stuff. But, you know, we don't have the kind of mechanisms like down here where market-driven is the way to go and it kind of creates incredible art and incredible commerce. We don't really have that in our, in our DNA yet, but uh, maybe it's changing. Well, um, you know, we are here at the uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen Center. It was Fulton Sheen who once said that uh, evil may have its hour, but God will have his day, or in gander time, five days. <laughs> uh, uh, but I just, on behalf of the Sheen Center, and I think I speak for everyone in the room, I want to thank each and every one of you. You said, you know, why do we forget certain things? I think I want to thank you all for reminding us that, uh, you know, when some people showed us the worst of humanity, you did show us the best of humanity, and that, as your mayor said at the end, that human kindness can always overcome hatred. So for that, thank you. Uh, go out, tell your friends, see this film. Good night.